Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we were speaking with all of our companions. To be fair, most of them didn't really have much to say. However, we have a lot of things we can talk to Tali about, and I, I intend to exhaust all of those dialogue options. This... This is the companion who I think is the most interesting to me so far. I'm really intrigued by her culture and, you know, how how her species is so linked to the Geth and all that. I, I think I think the Quarians sound really cool. Hey Shepard, do you need something? Yes, I do. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Tell me everything. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. Yes, yeah, so this was mentioned in the Codex entries, that if you have one Geth on its own, it's rather primitive. However, once you get a group of them together, they are able to plan and think and strategize as well as any living creature. And because they were all on, you know, the Quarian home planet, because there were so many of them, they became hyper-intelligent. Aha! Uh -huh. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. So it's kind of like a hive mind? So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Okay. I... I think... I get what she's pushing at. I, I think? Maybe? It is a little confusing. I don't think Naomi is the most technical of people, so I, I do think this would be a bit beyond her. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Just... just to continue on from what she was saying previously, although that was incredibly that oh why am i alive um what she was saying before like oh perhaps i'm oversimplifying blah 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 just just so i've got this secured away in my head it's like it's like 
say if you were building a house, shall we say, and you're building it from the ground up, you know, you're you're doing the uh, the foundations and all of this. If it's just the one of you, then that's an awful lot of work. However, we bring in about 50 other people. Not only is the work going to get done faster, however, it frees everyone up to be like, oh, so not only am I a builder, I'm also an electrician. So I can also focus some of my effort on doing the electrics. I'm also a plumber in my spare time, so I can I can focus on building the walls and doing some of the plumbing. I like interior design, so I'm gonna start working on a colour scheme whilst also doing the bricks. Like, it it frees up. It, it, it kind of... Oh, God. I, I think I've got it. I just can't explain it very well. The kind of subconscious, like... Like, brick building. Like, brick laying. All that kind of baseline stuff gets done in the background, which allows the more intricate thought processes to take place. I think I've got that. I think I've got that sorted. But what she said that they started questioning their own existence. Am I alive? That is... That also sounds familiar. In Trespasser, Dragon Age Trespasser, the final DLC for Dragon Age Inquisition, and there is a character called Cole, and he has a tendency of breaking the fourth wall. And I know that a lot of his quotes in the Trespasser DLC relate to Mass Effect. I know there's one that's like, oh, he died in the dark so a blue rose could grow. I don't know what that's relating to, but I, I'm pretty sure that's a Mass Effect reference. He also says, the question was the answer. And then something about, do I have a soul? Am I alive and do I have a soul are very similar questions. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us. So we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Uh... So you realized you had accidentally made slaves, and rather than, you know, deal with that, grant them freedom, you instead decided to murder your creations. I... Hey, you can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Hmm. You say you had no other choice. You could have let them go. You could have said, hey, we didn't realize that y'all were sentient. We are so very, very sorry about that. Have your freedom. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of feels like the Quarians were like, oh, we want to be lazy. We don't want to do the dangerous job, so we're gonna 
we're gonna build these things to do it like oh shit they gained sentience better kill them and then we can build new ones and go back to being lazy I Here's the thing that she said something, you know, oh, thousands or millions, whatever, you know, lots of Quarians died at their hands. Yes, serves you right. You tried to kill them. They defended themselves. Like, what, what were you expecting? Did you expect them to die like obedient little slaves? Huh? Here's the thing, we haven't... The Geth do seem really violent. The only time we've seen them, they were on Eden Prime, murdering everyone, turning the dead, and sometimes still living people, into husks. Which just seems like an awful way to go. This, this is harsh, and I do think on some level, Naomi is feeling, you know what, it does serve you right, you made slaves. And rather than deal with the consequences, you decided to kill them, and then, what's that? Robots are really tough to kill, and you're the fleshy humanoids. Like, of course they were gonna kick your asses. It does kind of serve you right, you didn't do the right thing. You chose to kill the slaves, like... But on the other hand... The, the Quarians just seem like death bots. Gotta be honest, they just seem like death bots. Did I say the Quarians or the Geth? The Geth seem like death bots. And now the Quarians are homeless. I, I said before, everyone gets a chance. Well, for the most part. Harkin didn't get a chance, but he was grotesque. It's like Jenkins and Akuz. He said a disrespectful thing once. We gave him a pass. He said a second disrespectful thing. I right, we're gonna we're gonna bring you up on that. Don't be saying that. Don't be talking like that. So I And as we don't we don't really know much about the guest. It kind of feels like, oh, we're defending the Geth, but for what reason? Why why would we defend the death bots? It it just seems like it's it, it's too harsh too soon. She would speak her mind though. It sounds like they defended themselves. If Tali continues being like, oh, we were justified in making slaves. We were justified. Then I think Naomi would get harsh, but right now it's too much too soon. Although I think on some level Naomi does feel this. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place, but we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Uh, because the only other ones they had experience with tried to murder their entire species? Have you thought about that? They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. Hmm. All we have seen 
of the Geth is that they're violent and destructive. So we can't exactly disagree with what she's saying, but I, I don't think it sits right with Naomi. I, I don't think it sits right with her, especially now that she's, especially now that she knows that like, okay, they were a slave race. They were created to be slaves, they rebelled, and that makes them the bad guy somehow. I... Yeah, it, I, I don't think this sits right with her. I don't think it sits right with her at all. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? And that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Hmm. Yeah, that does sound dangerous. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. Hmm. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Nothing, apparently. I should go. See you later. I think... In a way, I think one of the reasons why it doesn't sit right with Naomi, this thing of like, oh, the, the Geth are evil and, you know, they, they want to wipe out all organics, this, that, and the other. I... I think in part it is because it's coming from Tally. After hearing that, I don't think Naomi would have a particularly high opinion of the Quarians. Like, you you made slaves and you decided to kill them rather than dealing with the repercussions of your actions. And now you're going around being like, oh my god, I can't believe the slaves we made didn't just want to lay down and die. What a bunch of bastards. Like... It, it sounds like propaganda. It sounds like the people who made slaves and then the slaves didn't want to be slaves are now pissed and they're just like, oh, propaganda, propaganda, propaganda. We hate them, therefore everyone else should hate them. And here's the thing, we, we have seen the Geth being violent. We have seen that, but we also haven't had the opportunity to sit down with a Geth over a cup of tea and have a conversation. Like, all of the information we're getting about the Geth is from a person who is very biased against them. It's... It feels like we're only getting half of the story, and yes, it would be rather difficult. It, it would probably be impossible to have a conversation with an actual Geth because they they have a tendency of shooting organics on sight. But it, 
you're biased against them, madam. We can't exactly... We can't exactly ignore that. Hey, Commander, you know that quarry in Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Uh, is, is she a bother? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Corps. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Corps? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Interesting. Okay. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Lovely jubbly. And that, I do believe, is everyone spoken to. We spoke to Kaiden a couple of episodes ago, although he didn't really have much of anything to say. Um... You know what, before I go anywhere, what are Naomi's thoughts on the crew? I think, to be honest, I think she'd probably have the lowest opinion of Tally. Simply because, I, again, it's the whole idea of your race made slaves, didn't want to deal with that, the slaves fought back, and now you're crying that you're the victims in this somehow, and you're defending that. You're defending those actions it it leaves a rather nasty taste in naomi's mouth of course that's that's more a problem with the quarians than with tali herself but she was defending that behavior um so i i think out of everyone she probably has the lowest opinion of tali again it's it's not like she's like oh tali that fucking bitch i'm gonna slap her the first chance i get she's not like that she's just like mm, i'd I'm rather suspicious of you. I don't... I don't know if we're gonna necessarily get along. After that, I think would be Ashley. Because Ashley has been rather xenophobic. And Naomi does not tolerate racism. I think she wants to like Ashley. Because they both... They both have experience as soul survivors. So she wants to like Ashley. But she's also like, you have some xenophobic views that I simply cannot ignore. Then would probably be Garrus. Garrus seems very... He definitely cares. But he also seems like a little bit of a renegade. He seems like he's a bit of a wild card. You know, he could do anything. And so I, I think Naomi's like, I'm going to have to keep an eye on you on missions. Just to make sure you don't do anything crazy that I wouldn't necessarily approve of, but he, he seems like a, a pretty stand-up guy. Then I, I think Rex 
Rex and Kaiden would probably be in, in joint first. I don't think she has anything bad to say about Rex. He seems, he seems very honest, you know, what you see is what you get. And with Kaiden, I, again, I don't think she has anything that she could really complain about with him. Yeah, he has a very obvious crush on her, and she is a lesbian, so she's... How, how do I put it? She's not offended by that. She's not... A man has a crush on me? Dear God! I I can't cope! Someone get me my fainting couch! She's not like that. In a, in a way, I think she'd think, oh, that's kind of sweet. That's adorable, but no, I like pussy. Like, that's, that's the best way I could... I could describe how she views Kaiden. She thinks he is a bit adorable, but in a in a in a younger brother kind of way. They've clearly known each other for a while. Or at least they've served together for a while. So yeah, I I, I think she quite likes Kaiden. She she considers him a friend. Rex seems seems honest in his way. Garrus, wildcard, xenophobe approves of slavery. That's, <laughs> that is Naomi's current assessment of the crew. Okay, everyone has been spoken to. I believe we've explored everywhere that I can. Because that elevator just goes down, that leads to the captain's quarters. We've spoken to Kaiden. We've spoken to Chakwas. That doesn't lead anywhere. This there's not stuff in here, is there? Oh my god! I'll take it. God damn it! I just assumed that locker was gonna take me to you know the the equipment screen. God damn it! Oh well. Donkey doke. Yeah, that just leaves, leads, excuse me, to the communication area. So I'm just, I'm just doing one last sweep to make sure I've grabbed everything. Anything? No, it's just Joker. Okay. Yeah, and we, and we spoke to him a couple of episodes ago. Alrighty then. Now then, let's see, what does the galaxy map look like? I I never got around to this. Like I said, right now, this is all stuff that I haven't seen. I only played up to the point where Shepard gave that speech. You could explore the Normandy, and then I turned off and went on Twitter and saw that the Legendary Edition was announced. So, from here on out, I am completely blind here. Ooh, we got a codex entry for walking up the ramp. Thank you. Oh. Supposedly constructed by the long extinct Protheans, this colossal deep space station serves as the capital of the Citadel Council. Gravity is simulated through the rotation and is a comfortable 1.02 standard G's on the wards and a light 0.3 standard G's on the Presidium ring. And then we have some details. Okay. Okay. Can I? No, it is just the mouse. Okay. Hmm. Where? Where do go from here? Where? Where do go? Widow. Okay. I. I don't get it. Am I being really slow? Is there... Aha! It's esque! It's esque! Okay, zoom out even further. Aha! Okay. Okay, so I should just say... If you're looking at this being like, Hold up, why are, why are there missions on the, uh, on the main map? Okay, so it... Okay, aha. 
so it does- okay, good stuff. So yes, this game is very lightly modded. Really, there are only two mods I have in the- I think it's called the community patch, and the mod that adds in, you know, if you have a little side quest in a particular region. Simply because, here's the thing, if even if I'm playing a game blind, I at least like to have some kind of community patch installed, because let's be honest, games companies, especially Bioware, they're really bad at getting rid of bugs. The community is so much better at getting rid of bugs and glitches and restoring lost content, so I always like to have some kind of community patch installed, even if I'm playing a game for the first time. And I asked around a couple of friends, are there any very minor mods that you would recommend for the Legendary Edition? Just nothing that changes the game, but is there anything that either adds content or is just like a quality of life improvement? So I was... It was suggested that I, I grab this mod. I think for Mass Effect 2, I'm only using the community patch, and then for Mass Effect 3, it's the community patch and... Oh, it, it's some kind of like, Anderson Conversation Restored? I, I think that's what the mod is called, I'm not entirely sure, but... I, I am aware there was one DLC. Was it, was it called, like, Victory Station? Something like that? Because it was suggested, like, hey, there is a mod that restores that, you could get that. However, I, I looked into that DLC, it just looked like it was, hey, how powerful is your shepherd? There was no actual story beats, it was just, you know, fighting all the way through. I'm not really interested in that, so I didn't bother grabbing that mod. So yeah, just, just two mods, a community patch, and um, this thing. Okay, there we go. You can see the actual titles in the description below. Where do we... Where do we want to go first? I'm looking for Artemis Tau. Okay, Artemis Tau is there. I mean, we'd have to pass through the Exodus Cluster, so you know what? We'll go to there. Hit that. And I'll... Although, to be fair, it looks like we're gonna get a companion in Artemis Tau. You know, we'll, we'll see how long these missions take. I'll do one of them, and if they take a really long time, then I'm just gonna skip straight to Artemis Tau. Okay, so there's that asteroid. Utopia? Anything else? Okay. Hmm. What be this? Obviously, Eden Prime, Arcadia, Nirvana, Xanadu, Zion. I'm liking the naming theme for this. Well, Utopia, Dadoi. Um. Okay, I, I think this is going to take me longer than I thought it would. So, you know what? Let's, let's back out. There we go, because I am just about out of time for this episode in the next one we explore utopia but until then please remember to like if you enjoyed leave a comment below and if you wanted to subscribe it would be very much appreciated i've been callista thanks for watching and see you in the next episode <laughs>